to go down. What's going on? Welcome to Kidney Disease Education Moment. I am your host, Steve Belcher. Hey, check this out. This is going to be a brief but great education moment. I'm telling you, share this uh, broadcast, especially if you're on dialysis or if you know someone on dialysis and if you've been cramping or you know someone who told you they've been cramping, please share this broadcast. Um, give me one moment, uh, as I have to, uh, exit for one quick second. All right, guys. All right, here we go. Look, share this broadcast. 700, over 700,000 people are on dialysis and get diagnosed each year and i know out of that seven hundred thousand, someone cramps on hemodialysis all right now i'm going to share some information that can help you not cramp while you're undergoing hemodialysis in center because that's where this occurs the most in center if you were to talk to um patients doing home dialysis, they'll tell you, cramping, I don't even know what you're talking about. They don't cramp because they do their treatment. Some do it every day for two and a half hours. Some do it uh, several times a week for maybe six hours. But the point is they're able to pour the fluid off slowly and manage that instead of trying to get, say, four, five, six liters off within three to four hours, which um, has an adverse effect on your heart. So guys, share this broadcast. Uh, no one, you're not gonna get no dialysis personnel at 10 o'clock p.m., right? talking about cramping i mean for a lot of warriors right for a lot of warriors they don't find out about cramping until it happens they go to dialysis no one's educate they're educated them on what to expect and they sit in the chair they're watching tv got the earphones on Next thing you know, you you hopping out of the chair. You screaming, you're hollering, you're crying because you're cramping in your leg, in your back, in your stomach, in your chest. So this broadcast, this educational moment is going to be talking about cramping, what it is. What causes cramps? When does cramp occur? And is cramping uh, preventable? Is that possible? And if a cramp occurs, how it is treated? We're going to talk about that tonight. So again, share this broadcast. If you know other warriors, um, one thing I don't miss about, oh, absolutely. Thank you for joining me, Alicia. Please share this broadcast. Let me know where you're, uh, uh, where you reside, where you're uh, coming out of. Uh, God bless you for watching. So cramping, let's, let's get into it. If you spend time in the dialysis unit, it's likely you have seen someone with a muscle cramp. I'm sure you've been in a unit 
you heard someone scream out at the top of their lungs, maybe when you first started, and you like looking around like, what the hell was that? And you like, damn, I hope that doesn't happen to me. Maybe someone sitting across from you, they crying because they cramping. And you like, oh God, please don't let that ever happen to me. And then maybe one day it hit you. You know, you, it, you know, you don't know, like, how did this happen? Right? So I suspect anyone who has cramped during a dialysis treatment would tell you that these cramps are painful, occur quite suddenly, and are absolutely no fun. All right, Alicia, y'all, Jacksonville, Florida. Shout out to Jax. I'm coming down there soon, not sure when, but shout out to Jacksonville. Um, so what is a cramp? A lot of us refer to it as Charlie horse. But what, like, I want to give you, like, I want to break it down, but I want to give you, like, the quote, quote, medical uh, uh, jargon, how, how it's referred to. So a cramp is a prolonged involuntary muscle contraction. You know how something contracts, right? So it's a prolonged involuntary muscle contraction that occurs in a muscle that voluntarily contracts when it's already in its most shortened position. Now, what does all that mean, Steve? Basically, a muscle spasm or a, a cramp is a muscle spasm. That's all it is. They usually occur in the calf of the lower leg where muscles are larger, okay? Other areas where cramps can occur, where they can, they may not happen, but they can occur in your hands. How many people been, been on dialysis and you cramp in your hands? I've, I've seen patients. I, I look at them, they like, look, man, I'm cramping in my hands. And they're trying to straighten it out. And so we give them a little saline. You got some people who don't want saline. But I, I beg to differ. You got to take the saline to put that sodium back into your fluid, your feet, your chest. How many people like did like this out the chair because you had a muscle cramp maybe in your lower sternum? right and your stomach all right darlene god bless you thanks for joining darlene cunningham she said yes this this happens and i know a lot of warriors uh experience it and and that's why i want to do this education session tonight so you can be better equipped to prepare yourself to not cramp and not go through that because you're not supposed to cramp on dialysis. That's an adverse reaction. Dialysis is not supposed to be, um, it's not supposed to be harmful or, or um, to the point where you're leaving out and you're just feeling just, you know, just awful. It's a fine line of balance with that. So again, a, 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 a cramp is a muscle spasm, right? They usually occur in the calf of the lower leg where muscles are larger. Uh, other areas where cramps can occur include the hands, the feet, the chest, and the abdomen. Um, yeah, this is, this is serious, guys, and again, you're not going to, you know, I keep saying this because I want to show how dedicated and important this is to us, um, this education, because there's no healthcare care uh, 
professional that's going to be up this late again trying to convince people to watch an education show that will benefit them that will benefit them me trying to convince you to watch a show that will benefit you so i mean I, yes god bless y'all for watching and taking the time out and we're going to just give you the best information i can so you can be uh prepared when you go to dallas because look this is sunday night how many warriors go to dialysis tomorrow you got to figure out you know you're worrying about how much fluid you got on you may not got a scale and you may want to like oh god here go monday now i may go on crap because you may gain a little extra fluid you may have had a little bit of salt maybe some crab some seafood some chinese food something that has sodium and it maybe increased your thirst. And so you went over the 32 ounces. That's okay, but not all the time. And you gotta better manage that. But this information can help you even tomorrow when you go to treatment to see how you can better manage your fluid intake or Tuesday when you go to treatment. So what causes cramps? Surprisingly, this is research. Surprisingly, the exact cause or etiology of the cramping that occurs during dialysis is not known. Certain situations, however, make the possibility of cramping more likely. Cramps tend to occur when dialysis patients, one, are below their target weight, or two, are hypotensive, their blood pressure is low. I hope you heard, you know, follow that. I can go back over it. What causes cramps? Again, surprisingly, the exact etiology or cause of the cramping that occurs during dialysis is not known. However, certain situations make the possibility of cramping more likely. Cramping tend to occur when dialysis patients, again, one, are below their target weight, or two, are hypotensive, their blood pressure is low. When does cramping occur? Cramping is more common close to the end of the dialysis treatment. How many warriors started cramping like 30 minutes uh, before treatment, maybe 45 minutes, and you wanted to come off? Huh? I, I, I mean, during my career, I can't tell you how many patients started cramping 15, 20, 30 minutes before their treatment's over. And the technician is coming to me saying, Steve, Miss So-and-so wants to get off dialysis. Mr. So-and-so wants to end treatment. They, they're cramping. And if it's more than 15 minutes, I got to get them to sign the AMA. Whether they choose to sign it or not, that's on them. But if they don't sign the AMA, which a lot of patients don't, I still had to write on that patient refused to sign. But, um, but yeah, so cramping normally occurs near the end of treatment. So be on the lookout for that. Um, this is when a person is the driest and most likely to have a low blood pressure near the end of treatment. Because you know with dialysis, what, 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 what it's designed supposed to do, if you come in with a high blood pressure, right? Say you come in there like 180 over 90, 190 over 110 and you have maybe four liters on, right? 
Now, that four leaders could be contributing to the hypertension, hypertension, right? So what normally generally happens with dialysis is as we gradually pull off the fluid, your pressure tends to come down. With some patients, that doesn't happen like that because, every, again, everybody's different. So you may have to medicate them with a hypertensive medication to assist with lowering or decreasing their blood pressure. And with other patients, um, pulling their fluid off, uh, their pressure comes right down, just like clockwork. Um, is prevention preventable? Is cramping preventable? Absolutely. You don't have to worry about, are you going to cramp today? It can be prevented. It can be prevented. Two ways to prevent cramping. All right, I want to tell you now, two ways to prevent cramping during the dialysis treatment are, you ready for this? One, limit the amount of fluid removed during a dialysis treatment, right? And two, not go below your target weight. So I had some warriors when I used to work, they say, Regardless, like they could come in at say, let's just take for instance their dry weight is 85 kilos, and they come in at 88, right? So that's three liters they gotta remove plus the 500 for prime and rinse back. I've had some warriors say, take me like below my dry weight, or take me to 84.5 because it's the weekend. <laughs> and I used to fall for it early in my career, but no, because you don't know how much strain you're putting on your heart, right? You can even cause something that's called cardiac stunning. That's why they decrease on how much they want you to remove during treatment. I knew a guy and I worked in Houston when I traveled, this guy was like six, four, six, five, like two, three hundred, three ten. And he used to get treatment five days a week, I don't know, four days a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and came in on Saturday. And uh, he was on the largest dialyzer. And, and we, you know, we used to pull off like seven, eight liters off this guy. I mean, I would be like, damn. <laughs> this guy, I can't remember his name, but a uh, quick story to him, I travel. This particular patient was on, uh, um, uh, down in Houston, right, back in 2000. 6, 2007, they used to have this judge show on called uh, Judge uh, Larry something. He, cowboy guy who's a judge, Larry something. But this patient was on that show because he was married, a Filipino lady. Now imagine this guy, he's 6'3", 6'4", 3'10", 320, something like that. And a uh, Filipino lady... Uh, he's black and she's short, maybe like five something. I mean, it was crazy. But he was on the show and he didn't get married. He was trying to get his uh, engagement ring back. So I just thought that was uh, hilarious uh, in meeting this, this gentleman. Nice gentleman as well. But yes, to prevent cramping during dialysis, two ways that you can do this is one, limit the amount of fluid during the dialysis treatment. That means don't go out gaining a lot of fluid like this gentleman. Even when he came three, four days a week, he still go out and get 32 ounce uh, uh, soda from 7-Eleven, bring him in uh, during treatment. It was crazy.
and not go below your driveway. Don't say you want to take off extra because it's the weekend. You're setting yourself up for uh, feeling bad, hypotension, uh, cramping, and uh, potential uh, future cardiac issues. Uh, so to limit the amount of fluid removed each treatment, Drinking less fluid and eating less salt between treatments is the key. Now, a lot of warriors know that. A lot of kidney warriors on dialysis know that. But some still go against the grain and continue to uh, have these large fluid gains and then pay for it at treatment as a result of, uh, of, of, of experiencing hypotension, cramping, um, and, and, and uh, nausea, vomiting. I mean, a host of, of side effects as a result of pulling off all this fluid uh, during this short amount of, of treatment time. Now, to help prevent going below your target weight during treatment, weigh consistently. Even if you need to go buy a scale and put it in your home, you can go to Walmart. Just be mindful of what's going on. Weigh with a similar amount of extra weight each day, i.g. Uh, no coat, no purse, no books. Like when you step on the scale, when you go to dialysis, Take everything out of your pockets. In fact, if you don't have to go to work after treatment, I suggest go to, if you got like going home after treatment, I suggest going to dialysis with your pajamas on. Some people may call me crazy, but if, if I was going to outpatient and I didn't have nothing to do after treatment, I'm going with maybe some sweats on uh, or my pajamas. Uh, and I may have my shoes on. I am not going to wear the slippers and, and no bedroom <laughs> and no uh, no robe. But I'm, I'm saying go comfortable. Go without a lot of stuff on. I used to see patients. I kid you not. But it depends on the weather. I see patients come in with Timberland boots on, um, uh, all this gear, coat, and weight. Don't take off the shoes. Nothing. And you got to take that in account when you're uh, pulling off fluid. This is no joke. So I really recommend coming in as light as you can, as light as you can, so you can be consistent with your weight. It won't be no back and forth, no uh, uh, technician got it wrong, write it down, okay? Take a book, take a little pad, notepad or something with you. I mean, you can even get something like this and, and, and call it your dialysis book, your treatment book, right? And in your treatment book, you can write down everything that goes on in dialysis, right? You just take it with you to dialysis. You date it. Monday, da da this, pre weight, boom, my uh, standing pressure, my sitting pressure, my pulse, my temperature, how much I took off, how much I actually took off uh, from your by your weight, what was my post weight, what was my post temperature, what was my post BP, what happened during dialysis? All right, you want to write what happened during dialysis. See, a lot of patients are not going to do this because they just want to go to dialysis and, 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 and get their treatment over with and go home. And that's understandable. But look, for people who want to be mindful of their treatment, this is the way to go, right? Because we do a treatment log. When I'm, when I'm doing your treatment, I write every 30 minutes, patient sleep. Patient watching TV, patient cramping, gave patient 200 
uh, milliliters of normal saline. Patients uh, alert oriented. Patient cramping. Uh, UF turned down. You should do the same thing. My, uh, if your if your machine clots, your line clots, lines clotted. Oh, hey, uh, Bennett, say your technician. How much blood did I lose? Lost, according to technician, uh, lost 300, 200 cc's of blood. So if you keep a diary, right? If you keep a diary of your treatment, then there won't be no misunderstanding when the technician or the nurse try to uh, contradict something that you said or they said, and you can go to your records and say, look, on May the 5th, this was what I left out at. All right. This what happened during my treatment. Uh, you had uh, infiltrated. How many patients been infiltrated? If you watching this show and you've been infiltrated, I know I got off the topic, but I'm going. I'm just going somewhere for a second. If you got infiltrated, give me a thumbs up. And if you did get infiltrated, did you write it down? Or you just got infiltrated and went home and put ice on it. Oh, technician infiltrated arterial needle was stuck three times by technician. No ice applied. Blood flow rate unachievable. Uh, blood flow rate is normally 400. Was only able to achieve. 300 blood flow rate. See, a lot of patients don't know if you get infiltrated or something go wrong with the needle and the technician don't want to fool with it. They, If you're running at a 400 and your blood flow rate and your machine constantly goes off and they got to keep messing with the needle, they keep coming back, juggling the needle, doing this. And then next thing you know, they stop. Look at to see if what your blood flow rate is because they may have turned it down and didn't tell you or didn't chart it. So you got to be mindful of this. Um, so two, give your tech the correct pre-dialysis weight. That means writing it down. So instead of saying, oh, you go to the scale and if you don't write it down, you may go and forget and you get your temperature and you may confuse it. You may say if your, 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 your weight was 91.8, your temperature 97.8, you may say, uh, what's my, what's my weight? 91 something. Then how many times have you had to go back to the scale and reweigh? So write it down. Buy some posting notes, bring them with you. And, and get a dialysis pack, right? Get some posting notes, write your way down. Again, if you keep a journal, there won't be no confusion. You got your own journal to document your dialysis treatment. Your own journal. Keep your own record because I tell you what, they damn sure keep a record of what's happening with you even when you don't show up. So when it's time for that uh, transplant and they say, oh, you missed this many treatments. You got off dialysis early. You didn't sign that AMA. So listen, you keep a record of what they do because they damn sure keeping a record of, of what's going on with you. Um, This sounds easy giving the correct weight to your PCT or nurse. Uh, many persons find it helpful to, I'm, I'm sorry, what I was saying about the weight, you got to write it down because it sounds easy, but it's also easy to get distracted. And that's what I was talking about. You could be walking through the unit, a big unit, talking to different patients that you know, 
and you may forget. It's okay. Uh, and forget the exact number. Many persons find it helpful to write their exact weight on a slip of paper while still at the scale. Some places it prints out. I'm telling you, if that doesn't happen, write it down so you don't forget. Uh, or if your scale can print out your weight, take this paper to the tech or nurse. Know your prescribed target weight. Very important. And before I go, I want to give a shout out to our, our kidney warriors that's watching overseas from UK, South Africa, um, Cameroon, wherever you're at, India, uh, Saudi Arabia. God bless you and thank you for watching. Um, so know your target weight. I mean, I've asked a lot of patients as I traveled across the United States, what's your dry weight and what's your target weight? And the answer I get is, I don't know. They just uh, do it for me. It can't be like those days have got to be over. It's time to be intentional and know what your dry weight is. Be mindful of what's going on. Know your prescribed target weight and how much weight needs to be removed to get to that weight. You got to know it. Review these numbers with your tech. Don't let your tech say, this is how much I'm going to take off. Don't leave it in their hands. Be involved in your treatment plan. Don't leave it up to them. Please don't. And if you got a parent, a mom or dad on dialysis, please take charge of the treatment. Just don't drop them off and leave it up to the staff. Please. If you think your target weight may have changed, talk with your dialysis team. Even with you know people taking care of their parents that may be on dialysis. If your mom or dad or your uh, uh, spouse your partner, if their appetite's been increased, then they may gain weight. Then they may not need to take off as much. But how would you know if you're not mindful of what's going on? Be involved in that treatment plan. Cramping can often be prevented if these tips are followed. I promise you. So, um, Let me, okay, let me just go over this. If a cramp occurs, this is how it's treated. There are several treatment options. One, if a cramp occurs because a person is too dry, right? Saline, normal saline is the treatment of choice. We want to rehydrate you. We want to give you back that volume to prevent additional fluid weight loss. The UF rate or ultrafiltration as they call it on the dialysis machine is also lowered. Have you heard the technician or nurse say, I'm gonna turn off the UF? That's the ultrafiltration that's pulling the fluid. We normally decrease it or turn it off. Two, if the cramp is in the leg, Pushing against the foot can help. How many people, you see, you know, the nurse come up with the clipboard and you cramp and they tell you to push your foot up against the board. That can help or putting your legs down and standing on that cramp. However, if you do that, the other adverse effect of that is hypotension. But what happens when you push, uh, the leg against something, uh, this stretches the calf muscle and may relax the muscle spasm. Standing up can also stretch this muscle, but is not recommended, as I said in the beginning, uh, when dialyzed, especially when dialyzed. You got a lot of patients that jump up and they on a the machine, the line's dangling, and you got staff that runs over and ask them, look, Please sit down, sit down, because we've had patients stand up during treatment and 
completely fall out. Lines and everything. And they on the floor. Lines out, blood squirting all over the place. Yes, I've, I've been in that. So, I mean, it happens. We, we don't want that to happen. And that's why we ask patients not to stand up during treatment when they cramping. Also, uh, standing when too dry can lead to a large drop in blood pressure, leading to dizziness and fall. How many warriors stood up and next thing you know, you stood up, right? Because you're cramping. And then next thing you know, you're like, wait a minute, I got to sit down. And you're like, oh man, I'm starting to see dots. And then we put in that chair, we putting the level up, we putting your feet back and you flopping up and your legs bounce up, right? And, and we and, and we administer and selling because now your pressure drop, you're sweating, die, they call it diaphoresis. That's the medical jargon, but it's sweating, right? You die for recent. And, 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 and you got the staff coming with cold compress towels, wiping you off. And you're like, what happened? What happened? So, you know, this is serious, guys. Really serious. So look, cramping during dialysis should never be considered normal or, in, or inevitable. You shouldn't be like, oh, damn, I got to go to dialysis. I want to I want to cramp. No. That's that's not the norm. Knowing the possible causes and working together with your team, if they're willing to work with you, because we know how dialysis clinics are now. They're stacked to the brim. They're short staff. You got staff that don't give a damn. And it's like a warehouse type of environment. And I'm just being honest. Some places it's not like that. Some places there are. But when you got multiple clinics around the city, how are you staffing them when you don't have dialysis schools spitting out? It's not like you got a dialysis graduating class uh, every six months of people that uh, got certificates or uh, in-depth knowledge you know, these DaVita for seniors uh, training sites, even though they do have some, I want to say, okay, training, 10 weeks is not enough. 10 weeks is not enough to have your life in someone's hands. All right. I'm just going to say that. So with that being said, I'm just going to tell you, uh three things uh about your target weight that i hope you could take away tonight that can help you wherever you're watching now one when below your target weight all right if you're 85 or if you're 60 59 whatever your dry weight target weight is is interchangeable your base weight, dry weight, target weight, that's the weight that you should be without any fluid on, any excess fluid. When you're below your weight, you would expect to see low blood pressure, lightheadedness, and cramping. So for, for your warriors who want to take off that extra 1500 on Friday because it's the weekend. They want to go below your weight. And then when you leave out, you may not tell nobody that you're feeling a little lightheadedness. Or when you stand up, your pressure is like uh, when you sit and your pressure is like 120 over 80. And when you stand up, it's like 90 over 60, 80 over 60. And then when you go to the scale, instead of your dry weight 60, you leaving out 59.5, 59.4. And you're sitting down in the chair, you're putting your shoes on, and you feel like crap. And you, you're sitting down like this, and, and we're saying, you okay? You okay? And 
you know, you're like, yeah, I'm all right. But deep down inside, you know, you you know, you ain't feeling well. This is the stuff that got to stop. And that's why education is important. You're going to see lightheadedness if you're below your target weight. And you're going to see cramping. When you're above your target weight, right? When you're over your dry weight, your base weight, you would expect to see an elevated blood pressure. You come into treatment. Say you 85. You come into treatment tomorrow morning. Now you're, you're 89 now, you're 90. What? you like, how did I get not, how did I get all this weight on me? Maybe ate some crabs over the weekend, some Chinese food. And you have, you know, food with hidden sodium and you're drinking over the, you know, I mean, one knows when you're drinking too much. You know. But you go in on Monday or Tuesday and you're taking off four liters, three and a half, five for some people. You're going to expect to see an elevated blood pressure, swelling or edema in your lower ankles, puffiness, what we call around your eyes, what we call orbitoedema, face puffy. Hands may be puffy, maybe short of breath, right? You may have to sleep with three, four pillows on Sunday night. Can't wait to get the treatment Monday morning. Now, when you're at your target weight, when you're at your base weight, your dry weight, you would expect to see a normal blood pressure. No swell in the hands or the feet. None. And no shortness of breath or fluids in the, in the lungs. In fact, there are many warriors who go to outpatient hemodialysis that follow that regimen. They, they gain less than three liters between treatments. They watch their intake. They measure it. They watch their sodium content. And these people have less complications and issues during the hemodialysis process. So with that being said, let me look at these comments. And I'm going to call it a night. I, I, I thank you guys for watching. Uh, let me see. Let me start with Darlene. That used to happen to me even when I wasn't on dialysis. I'm sure you're probably talking about cramping. Leslie, hey, Leslie, I hope your mom and everybody's doing well. Leslie said I would get them in my stomach after transplant. Wow. Even after transplant, you was getting them. Wow. So probably you was, uh, wasn't drinking enough fluid, huh, Leslie? I'm sure they may have told you to start uh, hydrating uh, if that happened after the transplant. Wow. Also, your neck. Yup. Yup. Darlene commented she used to get, I'm sure, in her neck or cramps as well. Alicia, she says, I'm so thankful I treat at home. Absolutely. Alicia, we do a show. We had a show on Sunday uh, with uh, Don P. Edwards and uh melissa tough on world kidney news if you go to urban health outreach media facebook page under videos you can look for world kidney news this past sunday it was a great home show and maybe we can get you on 
uh, the show one day and talk about your home experience. Darlene says, that was me. My BP will always be up when I was getting off dialysis. Wow. Was you over your dry weight? So have you ever had anybody that was on dialysis and still was passing urine and you had to unhook them to you? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, many, many patients. And, uh, um, you know, with male, you know, we get the uh, urinal. Some males would take the urinal and we get a privacy screen. And, you know, with the females, we take them off and they go to the restroom. And Darlene, I kid you not, quick story. I worked at a, a DaVita unit in downtown Baltimore back in the early 90s. And I kid you not, Darlene, uh, patients used to come off dialysis and go into the restroom. And they had a restroom in the unit and one in the hallway because this facility was in the medical building. They used to go in there and smoke crack. <laughs> I kid you not. They smoke crack and shoot dope. And how they do it, uh, you know, with the uh, crack, they had the pipe and then smoke it in the bathroom. But and uh, with the heroin, they had a syringe. And with some patients, they had the catheter. So, you know, we had to hook them and put the syringes on. And they had their own syringes. And they used to shoot it up. And we would know when they come back, you know, the the uh, the syringe been tampered with. So, uh, and, and I mean, patient come back, they nod out. They're in the chair. They go right back to sleep real fast. And I'm shaking. I'm missing. Hey, yo, Mr. What's the name? They like, huh, huh? Yeah, yeah. Be like, I mean, really, I can't take them off. Nothing I can do. But just, you know, I just pray, man. But it was sad. I mean, it, you know, this this is the ugly part of, 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 of kidney disease. I mean, you know, some people watching now are like, wow, how would people be allowed to smoke crack cocaine in the bathroom of a dialysis unit? This how out of control it was. Yes. Um, let me see. Uh, Jared says, thanks for watching this show. Absolutely. Thank you, Jared, for advocating. Thank you for doing uh, what you do on Warriors Quest. And you guys tune in tomorrow night with uh, Jared A. Brown, host of Warriors Quest, as he have on special guest, his twin brother, Jeffrey A. Brown from Abu Dhabi. And uh, the special guest, Chris and Hernandez, Kidney Warrior looking for a donor. So please tune in tomorrow for Warriors Quest. Uh, Michael Jefferson says, I keep it. Man, boom, I knew somebody. I'm telling you, Mike, you're doing the right thing, man. He keeps a journal. I mean, because I know other warriors that keep a journal. And, and when I didn't know any better, you know, early in my career, and I see patients used to do that, I, I used to say to myself, I wonder why she's doing that, like I'm doing something wrong or something. But no, you keep a journal, your treatment. She was being mindful. And so now that I know and I'm aware, uh, you know, I passed that idea on to other warriors as well. Absolutely, Jared. It's a good idea. Yep, let me say they are totally different than they were in 91. Yep. Yep, Alicia says you got that right. Um, I would not do him on this day and time. Wow. Hey, thanks, Kevin, man, for watching. Appreciate you, man. You doing any hunting? <laughs> man, I may have to visit you, man. Come do some hunting. 
I never been, but I I wanted to try anything once, you know. You know, especially got a rifle for me. <laughs> uh, thanks, Leslie. Oh, my good friend. Hey, Sabrina, what's going on? God bless you. I hope everything's going well down in uh, GA. Uh, stay safe down there. And, and thanks for watching. Uh, seriously. It took a long time for me to uh, get used to drinking. Okay, got you. Got you. I understand that. I'm sure you got. You definitely got to pace yourself, Leslie, when you're not used to drinking a large amount, especially when you're going from not drinking, you know, trying to control it, now to drinking pretty much abundantly to a certain point. But I, I definitely understand. Oh man. Oh man, that's awesome. Uh yeah. Uh definitely send out a uh Urban Kidney Alliance, Urban Health Outreach Media. Uh would probably like to send out an early congratulation uh and six month anniversary to Leslie Devall out of uh uh Land of GA. Uh, God bless you, Leslie. Um, man, I'm glad that everything is going well. I remember when you was on the show and you was, you know, looking for that kidney. And I remember when it came through. Oh, man. It, it just, um, you know, just seeing those stories like knowing the person when they went through that moment. And, and and going along that that uh journey with them i mean not exactly with them but on the outside looking in and um you know i know we have your you know the battles of a transplant but just to see that everything huh don't tell me in a hospital you just said in the hospital i hope you're not but um uh yes so please if, if leslie is in the hospital please go to her facebook page and send uh blessings and prayers and 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 uh positive thoughts and vibrations her way uh so she can hurry up for a speedy recovery if that's what hey all right sabrina god good good definitely stay safe down there I want to get you on the show one day. I know we we be tussling back and forth with that, but I want to get you on one of them. It may not be with me, or but I definitely want people to hear your story because you definitely got one to share with the world. So God bless you for watching. Thanks again. You in the hospital, Leslie? Oh, oh, yeah. That's right. You did the interview in the hospital. That's right. That's right. I remember right at that's right. Right, right after the transplant. Wow. Manny. Oh man, I gotta have you on the show. 28 years. Hit me up on the inbox, man. We gotta get you on a uh, show to talk about what you've seen. And your experience in the 28 years that you've been on dialysis. So I, I welcome you to inbox me, Steve Belcher, RN on, on Facebook, man. And I'll have you on as fast as you can say hemodialysis. But no, um, please, man, reach out to me. 28 years. I mean, love to hear, uh, hear your story. Oh, okay. I know, I know, I got it now. That's right. And, and again, I remember that when you had it. And I, thank you for granting us that uh, access uh, to you uh, during that uh, special moment uh, in your life. So uh, I appreciate that, uh, Leslie, because, you know, not everybody uh, is private. You know, I mean, I'm sorry, would be open like that especially right after a transplant. And I'm, I'm sure you're not in your, your um, you know, 
best state and and you know you like to be really dogged up and everything so again thank you we appreciate you uh opening up your um your life at that at that time uh when you had your transplant in the hospital so again god bless you and hope your mom is doing well and 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 everything so all right guys i'm starting to get sleepy and dragging on but again thank you guys for watching again i'm just trying to come up with different uh topics i mean i don't have to i got a book full of stuff but just want to be interested keep you engaged something that's um that pertains to everyone or or everyone who experienced kidney disease can relate to the topic that i'm talking about um that's what we try to do and it doesn't matter the time or the day i could just come on so uh <laughs> yeah you was drugged up and just try to come on and educate everyone because we all uh, talk about there's not enough spotlight on kidney disease and it's the ninth leading cause of death in the united states uh love you too leslie thank you uh, and you would think more uh, acknowledgement, more information would be shine on this disease, but it's not. And I'm just hoping what we're doing here at Urban Health Outreach Media can just take it over the top where somebody can acknowledge. And that would be the opening to say, oh, you're doing this. Why are you doing this? What's your why? And then I can tell them that why that thousands of people are being afflicted with this disease and it's affecting minorities at a disproportionate rate but yet it's affecting everyone it's almost like i mean <laughs> this is crazy you can almost use that same analogy and uh <laughs> you know i can laugh at it because just like people say, uh, uh, all lives matter. And then you got people say black lives matter. We know all lives matter. Uh, and you know, we know that black lives matter. And then the same is like with kidney, uh, disease, it affects like all across the spectrum, black, white, Spanish, Asian, you know, young, old. However, it, it disproportionately affects blacks and minorities at a huge, huge rate. And that's why I decided to do a film documentary urban crisis to answer that question why <laughs> why and that that question will be answered so guys i went off the rails a little bit thank you for watching and uh alicia thank you please subscribe to our page urban health outreach media uh i would love to have you on the show as well alicia robinson Please reach out to me. Send me friend requests, Steve Belcher. And then, guys, this young lady right here, uh, I want to say it publicly. Or I said it before, but this young lady, Aaron Willer, I love this woman. <laughs> I don't say that in a, in a lustful way, but I love this woman as a friend, a Facebook friend. Uh, she's welcomed me to her home. Uh, to her uh, uh, seclusion area where she gets her peace, her comfort uh, at the ocean. And she has been a big supporter of Urban Kidney Alliance. In fact, she, she was my, my one of my first supporters, not with money, but just with positive uh with, with positive uh, 
post, encouragement. Back from 2014, we're talking six years, this woman has supported me. And she's been there through thick and thin. And I love her for that. And and I, I just want you to know that. And I want everybody else to know uh, you, you've been a blessing. And so God bless you, your mom, your daughter. And you know I got your back because uh, you always had mine since 2014. So I just wanted to get that public acknowledgement. Love you guys. Thank you for watching. Thank you, Jared. And guys, I will be back again for another education moment. Join Tamika and I this Thursday for Urban uh, Reno Talk with Tamika and Steve as we have one investigative journalist from ProPublica, Lizzie Presser, who is going to talk about type 2 diabetes, the complications from a, uh, a investigative journalist perspective. That's going to be hot. That's going to be a hot show. And then tomorrow, again, Warriors Quest at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with Jared A. Brown. He's going to have on half of the Brown brothers, his twin brother, Jeff, from Abu Dhabi. And special guest, Chris Ann Hernandez, kidney warrior, who is also looking for a kidney donor. And she also does home dialysis. So we, I, I uh, convinced another person to go on home dialysis. So this is going to be great show tomorrow. So we see you guys tomorrow night on Warriors Quest. Love you. Thank you guys for watching. God bless you. Stay blessed and encouraged. Peace.